Good morning, YouTube. This is Amy's Bro, and for this video, we're going to do eh, a couple things tonight. First off, an update on Super Metroid. We beat Curried for the about 50th time now. No, I'm not joking. I've beaten that, I've beaten that boss now. It feels like 50 times. Anyway, beat him. Got the Valerius suit. Did a couple sequence breaks in the game. One was before I actually got to Norfair. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this last night. One of the things you have you can do is if you know how to wall jump, which is not easy. Which it's not as easy as it sounds in this game anyway. Um. You can wall jump into this one tube and then morph morph ball your way through to get one of the missile packs. Well, there's that. There was also a section to get a wave beam, which again, not as easy as it sounds because to do it, you have to. You either need the I know it's just damn it. Anyway, um, you either need a speed booster or the grappling hook, or you need to know how to wall jump again. Most of the sweet sequence, blah, 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 blah. most of the sequence breaks in this game involve that. One involves mock balling, which I actually can do, just not well. But doing the wall jumps in this game is pretty goddamn hard. And in this game, while it's not technically necessary in some cases, well, actually in one case it is. But for like most of the game it's not really that necessary but if you want to be able to do the breaks properly you pretty much need to know how to do that anyway so got one of the missile packs got one of the beams actually got two beams because one beam I got you would have needed the high jump boots but I did it with the wall jump so I got the spacer Got the ice beam. Basically, no affair is done for now. So now I'm going back to Brinstar. Yay! I know it took longer than I thought it was going to, but anywho. Progressing well. <laughs> the goal is to hopefully get back to Moridia. Which is where I stopped the last time. And hopefully this time see the game through to completion. The goal is, by the way, to get all 100% of the items in the game. Just so we're clear. Now then. <clears throat> now that I got that out of the way, where are we going next? Well, let's talk about anime in 2013. Let's start in January. Because, ladies and gentlemen, and by the way, we're talking about my 2013 with anime. Yours may have been different if you watched any new ones that I have not. But the big ones that I watched, there were, there's two to three big ones um, that I've watched so far. <clears throat> One was The Beautiful World for Hatalia. Now, for those that don't know, Hatalia is a satirical parody of events in world history. Told through the countries, but told through human perso human personifications and their personalities reflect their countries in some cases. In Access Powers, that was a two season series. The World Series, which I actually had to look up because I forgot what the hell it was called. Um, <laughs> was also two seasons, so there was four. And then, you come to find out there's going to be a fifth. Or there's going to be at least a, a third part to this called The Beautiful World. And I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be another two season uh, run. Well, actually, it's been, tw it's been 20 some episodes. And, <clears throat> excuse me. It is currently over. Now, whether or not they're going to do a second season under that banner, or they're going to come up with a sixth season, or they're just completely done, is to be determined. 
uh, you're going to hear that a lot this this uh, video I promise you but currently the series is done whether whether or not the excess powers boys will be back is a complete another guess I'm hoping so because I actually thoroughly enjoy um, the excess powers program and its fandom is very unique in that they will continue to make fan games for it. Sadly, the only one that I know of actually had an English translation completed and commercially available to play is Heta Oni. The other ones, sadly, <coughs> Roma Heta, Heta Quest, and Heta Hazard do not have one. Which kind of sucks, but what are you going to do? But that's the way my 2013 started this year when it came to anime. And I actually did enjoy this one. I was just saddened there was only 20 episodes. But when you look at a couple of the other series that have been out this, this 2013, it actually is one of the longer running ones. That Well, other series that interested me. Anywho. Another one that I watched over the summer was called, or over the year, was called Brothers Conflict. That's an interesting one. Basically, take, the, take Full House or the Brady Bunch and inject it with steroids. That's what you got here. <laughs> Twelve half-brothers of one female protagonist and here's the problem some of them are actually in love with her yeah do you see where the conflict comes in yet the idea was for the entire 12 episode run and whether or not there will be a second season is completely up in the air at this point as it stands right now no um the entire pro premise was some of the brothers were actually in love with her. Now, in Japan, it's a little funky how this works. Basically, if you're a half-brother or a cousin, there's no real law that say that there's no real way of looking at this as incest, according to them, according to their culture. To us, you kind of look at it and go, yeah, okay. But anyway, so the concept is some of them were legitimately in love with her, but some looked at her, or eventually came to look at her, as nothing more than a sibling. One of my favorite characters in the entire series <coughs> is a hairdresser named Lewis. And let me just say this right now. I have mentioned this on my Tumblr blog, which... I actually have a note which says to put it that in the description finally. Oh, hey, by the way, here, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you this right now. This may or may not come out properly, but actually it won't because of the way my camera's working. But it says on here, <laughs> put the link in the description, amysroad.tumblr.com. And like I said, I know it's not going to show up on the paper properly. Well, it does a little bit, but... So I have to remind myself to do that tonight. <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to and I keep forgetting. But anyway, this was the start of a series on Tumblr where I did what was called a Thoughts On um, every week. Where I did my thoughts on the episode and how each episode progressed the story that the writers were trying to tell you. As you'll find out, this series probably told one of the better stories of the ones that had a storyline that I watched. This one more or less did. I tell you, it doesn't. That's more just a situation comedy in many respects. They're like five minutes long. Think Azamanga Daya if you've ever seen that. Which actually I have. <laughs> I've actually watched some Azamanga Daya at one point. Um. But, yeah, I mean, 
it's a great series. The like I said, the concept if you're watching it through um, our eyes, you may go Ugh, and steer, steer, steer away. But there's some great characters in there. I mentioned Lewis. Then you have another brother. His name is <coughs> excuse me, Hicketer. He's probably the more interesting of all of them for his occupation. I'll let you watch the series to find out. I'm not going to give you spoilers here of any key things. But you have the lawyer, Yuko. You have um, Masami. He's the elder. The youngest one is a, is a crack-up. Wataru. He's a crack-up because he... I think he kind of likes the lead, the, the female lead, but because of how young he is, it's kind of, yeah. But I personally believe the show needs a second season, and I even said in on my Twitter, on my Tumblr, on comments under one of the videos for Brothers Conflict. It needs a second season. We need our brothers back. I need to be able to see another season of the show. Because it was the one thing... Here's the one thing I was guaranteed. Wednesday night at midnight, I was going to sit down, I was going to watch that, I wasn't going to get pissed off with it, I was going to enjoy it. And I did. The, the, the smile on my face tells you how much I enjoyed it too. There's there's 13 brothers. I'm sure you would find one that would um that would appeal to your personality. So here this was a, an interesting year in anime for one for a reason, a couple of reasons. <clears throat> and one of the big ones, personal opinion, is we noticed a shift in some ways with the way. The shows were wrote because in the old days of cartoons, there was the ones that were for girls and the ones that were for boys, technically. That was the 80s way of thinking. Now, of course, this is 2013, almost 2014, but what happened is with, like, Attack on Titan and with, um... Excuse me for a second. There we go. With Attack on Titan, Free, Brothers Conflict in some cases, um, you'll have these male leads that are wrote in such a way that the female viewership gravitates towards them, which is fine, but what also happens is I sometimes wonder, do they forget there's a female? Attack on Titan is a perfect example, but hey, I haven't really watched it. I've just, from observations that I've seen, I noticed some things that were kind of like, huh. But like, my personal favorite brothers, like I said, Lewis Hikaru was one. Um, Iori. The prince of the Asahina family. God, I liked him. He, he was the dude that, from probably episode one, I said to myself, okay, if Emma, who is the name of the lead character, if she was my sister, and... She brought Iori home for me to meet him. I would say, go ahead. Just, no, no hesitation. Go ahead. Because he was a perfect, he was like a perfect gentleman. Yes, okay, if you've ever seen his backstory, it's fucked up, but it's not bad otherwise. So anyway, um, I highly recommend this series, Brothers Conflict, I also recommend watching The Beautiful World. 
Both, by the way, which are on Funimation's website, so be sure to check that out. Um, if you want to get a chance to see the um, shows. The final one, and this one I can't really recommend so far. I've got two episodes to watch through today before I do my final review of it. It's called Diabolic Lovers. It's essentially a dark version of Brothers Conflict, at least in my opinion. You have six brothers. Well, technically speaking, they're half-brothers. Because the six of them come from three different marriages from the same guy. No, I'm not joking. Now, what's worse, well, maybe not worse, but what's more interesting is the six young men, in this case, are all vampires. No, I'm not kidding you. They're all vampires, so <laughs> it makes things quite interesting. I had a legitimate interest in this series honestly and I won't say it waned immediately after the first episode but here's what happened and I'm gonna tell you this now because look do you remember I was talking about that flip okay here's a female character and I know I keep itching my nose I don't know what the hell's going on it's weird but here's this female lead and, um, she supposedly has a secret. Well, the secret is, I don't want to say it's completely given away by the first episode. The only way it, you would know it right away is if you happen to, because sometimes Wikipedia is good at accidentally spoiling things, certain plot elements. Because I was having the hardest time remembering the full name of the, of the female character, that was that was kind of one of those, you know, situations. So what ended up happening was I'm watching this and I have how do I put it? I started to get more and more angry over the series because I could have a connection to the brothers Asahina, the Sakamagi brothers, which is legitimately, I swear to God, the names of these guys. Almost none of them did I actually like. Well, actually, I can't say that. Maybe there's like two out of six. Which is kind of good. But two out of six. Meanwhile, goddamn near ha the entire cast of Brothers Conflict, I actually liked. There was one jackass on the whole, on that whole cast I didn't like. His name was Futo. He's an idol. Okay. That, you take it or leave it. But, When I was watching um, Diabolic Lovers, I thought of a couple things to myself. First off, I'm no expert on vampires and I don't ever claim to be. If you get bit by a vampire, even once, shouldn't you be dead? Like, uh, generally, that was the one thing that I honestly kept kept going in my head. I didn't look at this as like I was trying to think scientifically, you know. And I know you're not supposed to do that, 
when she got bit at least two or three times an episode in some cases. Now there's 12 episodes, well, 13 if you count the recap episode they did, which was literally called 6.5. I don't see why they had to do that. What is this trend? Because I know that, what was it? Attack on Titan did this also. They had an episode, and instead of giving it a new episode number, they called it point five, which I don't. I, I I'm sorry, I just don't get. It. Imagine if like I did an episode of my series, and I actually had like. You know, episode one, two, three, and then the recap I did three point five. Kind of would make sense, right? Well, they did it, and so did Attack on Titan. Anyway, so the first six episodes, you were kind of given each one of the characters a spotlight episode. Okay, fine. But then, the, but then here's where I have an issue when you're doing a season or a show that's 12 episodes and each episode is only 15 minutes long. You have to cram as much plot at some point into a show as possible. By the time you do that, people, because I was reading the comments, there were people literally going, oh wow, plot, once you got to episode 7. It didn't, it doesn't make sense to people. So, can I really recommend this show? No. Primarily because, one, you don't really find characters in the show, in my opinion, that are likable. And that's a big one. Not even the female. The female lead... Again, I'm not going to get spoilers, so you're going to have to find out why I really didn't like her in the first place. But the female lead, okay, I get it. Th there was a plot device that they were doing with her, but still, first off, you kind of blew it. If you didn't show basically the big or part of the big secret in the first fucking episode, we wouldn't have to go, huh, okay. Do you see the problem yet? So now we're getting to the end of, or at the end of, this series. And I have to watch two episodes tomorrow so I got 30 minutes to sit through, well plus ads because I'm watching it on a free count on uh, Crunchyroll, but I gotta sit through 30 minutes tomorrow and try to suffer through this. Because honestly, this wasn't enjoyable. At least this show. The other two that I mentioned, great! Hell, I didn't even mention Free I, uh, I w Free Iowa Toby Swing Club, I have to watch that series at some point. That actually looks interesting because, ironically enough, there's a bit of an attachment there because I used to swim when I was a kid. So that will be interesting to watch for me tomorrow. Uh, well, maybe not tomorrow. I, will, I probably will officially start that Tuesday. I'm gonna need something. We're supposed to get more snow here on Tuesday. But anyway, those. That was my 2013 in review, and I do apologize for the length of this video, because goddamn, we almost went 25 minutes. But, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you all uh, tomorrow, hopefully. And, yes, I'm going to remember to put this in the description. And I know, obviously, you can't read that. But that's why you'll be reading in the description, hopefully. Bonus bumps. You have a good night. Later, gang.